when I was since since high school I had basketball injury. I said Lindsay. Had a basketball injury in high school and it used to bother me really bad uh -huh. for years. And last year I, I did yoga for a few months and I felt a lot better this mm -hmm. entire year since then. And I haven't I haven't done yoga in about seven, eight months now. Okay. But um it's like it's like a dull pain. I'm kind of numb to it now, but right. it's a little annoying. But I haven't had any bad flare-ups since yoga. But before then, there could be times like in the middle of the day where it just hits me and I can't like mm -hmm. I just need to just sit down and I can't move. And how old are you? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay. What I want you to do, so I'm gonna have you actually walk the hallway here. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna see what kind of how your posture is as you walk. Okay. So just a normal gait. Go ahead and go all the way to the end of the hallway. There you go. Just walk all the way out there. No. Okay, come on there. If you notice his right foot flares out. As he walks, and he's also his head goes to the right a little bit. See how his head stops. See how his head actually sits to the right side mm -hmm. of the body a little bit. I thought that was just your beard. Actually, <laughs> 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 his left shoulder drops a little bit as he walks. He's mm -hmm. kind of exaggerated. So I exaggerated the way he's the way he's looking like this. You know. If you look at him just standing there, you're still going to see more him off the center. His hips, his hips seem to be squared over the sh over the shoulders, but still the shoulders a little lower. And for some reason, more exaggerated flare with the right foot than the left, but both of them flare out a little bit as you walk. Okay? So... What we're looking at more than likely, first thing I want to look at is probably the femur, the pelvis. Um, you played football, you said? Basketball. Basketball. You fell a few times, I'm sure, in basketball. And then when I was younger, I did aggressive inline skating, so it was probably really bad. Yeah, you've fallen a few times. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, so come on in here, and what we're going to do, do I explain... Let me explain a little bit about what that test is that I was doing. Okay. Go ahead and have a seat. Each joint in the in the body, each muscle in the body is programmed to move through a certain range of motion. When it does not, it sends a stress signal to the brain. Okay. Anytime the body is experiencing stress, it turns on a sympathetic response. Okay. And the brain prioritizes to whatever area that is stressed, and it tries to handle that area first. I always give the same example, okay? You go to the emergency room, and you have a broken toe. I go to the emergency room, the same emergency room, and I got a stab wound in my stomach. They're going to take care of me first, right? Because I'm the higher priority. The triage nurse or the triage doctor in the emergency room is, is it's jo her job, is her job, is to assess who is the highest priority, what's the most dangerous, life threatening case that we need to deal with immediately. Mm -hmm. right? The brain is the same way as far as stress goes. It says, what is the biggest stress here? Uh, let's let's take for example that you know you, you've got an injury in, in your your. You're limping around and all of a sudden a dog starts chasing you. Yeah. Well, you're going to forget all about that limp, <laughs> right? Because you got 120, 120 pounds of dog chasing you, right? Yeah. Nothing but meat and teeth. <laughs> and they're interested in eating you, right? Yeah, yeah. Once you get away from that area, you, you'll start limping again. But your brain's going to shut that pain off because it's time to survive. Right. You see? The survival mode of limping becomes less of a priority than being able to run and get out of that area away from that dog because your, your brain's afraid that you're gonna die, mm -hmm. okay? 
the same things going on with your muscles. If I push on a particular muscle or joint that's not moving through the range of motion that it should, it's going to, de it's going to detract the body or you know, the brain's ability to focus on other areas. It's not about strength, it's about timing. Much like the timing in your car, okay? If the timing gets off, it's not going to run the way it should run, right? So the muscle won't fire the way it's supposed to fire. Electricity does not go to an area just in a steady stream. It's a pulse. And it pulses faster or slower depending on the strength of that electrical current. Got it? So what we can do is I'm going to have you hold your arm straight up. I'm going to push down. I want you to resist against my hand. Do you have any shoulder issues with this shoulder? Okay. Not that you know of. Push against my hand. I'm going to push down. Right. And I'm going to come out here even further, push against. I've got a little more leverage out there. So I like to use right here because you can really hold it up and I can really put some force there. Right? You can see that I'm pushing myself up off the ground a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's try the other one. Push against. Okay, now, what I want you to do is I want you. Actually, you should be having some low back pain. Mm -hmm. right. One more time, I'm going to push. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down through and just touch these vertebrae in your low back. Mm -hmm. right. And when I touch one, I'm going to push here, and let's just see what kind of response we get. Okay. okay. So push. All right. We're going to start about L1. Push against. <laughs> All right. So as soon as I touch that first spine, or first spine is processed there, yeah. the brain's going, wait a minute, something's wrong here, hmm. it's not just for me touching you, because I'll just touch a spot here, I'm going to touch on your shoulder, push against my knee, cool. no problem holding that up, right, yeah. now I'm going to touch right there, that's about where I was touching, right, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm going to push, whoa, <laughs> that's true. It's crazy, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Now, what's happened is when I pushed here, the brain said, No problem, I can deal with that. That's not a stress. Yeah. But when I touched here, the brain said, Now, wait, that's the stress. Mm. Okay? Go back to our analogy of the emergency room. Yeah. The triage nurse said, Stab wound to the gut. Broken toe. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. As far as being able to deal with that stress. Okay? So this was a higher priority stress than me pushing here. Right? right? Hold that up for me. Good? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a neat trick so far. Yeah. Let's go down a little further. Let's see if we can find another one here. Okay, so when we go down further, push against. Come on over here. I want you to see where I'm pushing him. I want everybody to see this. So if I push right here on this spot, is that a little tender maybe? No? Okay. If I push on that spot, I can't hold it up. Now I'm going to move down to the next spinal segment. Push. A little weak still. We're going to go down a little further. Still a little weak, but not as bad, right? Push against. We're getting down. Oh, he's really having issues with this whole... A little back. Let's go up here a little higher. Push against. <laughs> Get up there. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Okay. Um, let's even touch right there. No issues, right? Yeah. Now, That's crazy. this is cool stuff, but there, that, it tells us there's an issue there, but we already knew there was an issue there because you said you had low back pain, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really mean much of anything other than I've located an area that could be out. Yep. Right? So the spine, that spine will rotate when they subluxate, as we say in chiropractic, it'll rotate to one side or another. So what we can do is right here was one of the one of the areas where it would get weak, right? Mm -hmm. What I can do is I can push on one side and challenge and say, okay, now if I move this bone this way, is it gonna make that problem worse or better? Okay? Right? So I'm gonna pull, take a little tissue pull here and push. It got, it's still weak. So I'm going to push on the other side, push against. Now, 
as long as I hold my hand there, yeah. you're good, right? <laughs> okay. That's ridiculous. All right. Yeah. One more little demonstration here, and then I'm going to adjust you. I'm going to show you something. This is really interesting. Okay. Is this shoulder getting tired? Yeah. Get a little tired. Yeah, right. let's, let's use the other arm. So, so we, we got a nice, strong, not fatiguing the muscle. I want you to turn your head and look over your shoulder for me. We're going to check range of motion. Relax for a second. Remember what I said. Joints and muscles are programmed to move through particular ranges of motion. When they don't, it sends a stress signal. Okay? That stress signal, the stronger the stress, the stronger the sympathetic response. Okay? Any stress that goes into the body, whether it's the external environment or the internal environment, any stress dictates a sympathetic response. The more stress, the stronger the response. Responses of some of few of the responses of the sympathetic nervous system is high blood or the blood pressure increases, blood sugar levels increase, um, the vasoconstriction to the digestive tract, so the digestive tract is going to slow down. There's uh, the vasoconstriction to the torso, is, and then we have vasodilation. So we got more blood in the extremities, the arms and the legs, because we're ready to fight or flight. Okay, that's our sympathetic response. All right. So a minimum, a tiny little stress, eh, you're probably not going to see it as much. A much stronger stress, like the 120 pound dog running after us, full blown sympathetic response. Right. Pupils dilate. Adrenaline shot, adrenaline <laughs> rather, right? No more limping, we're just all mass to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Push against. Okay, so turn and look over your shoulder, push against my hand. No, 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 little, little bit. Go the other way for me. Push against. And then same thing, about the same. Look straight up, push against. No problems. Mm -hmm. Chin to chest, push against. All right, ear to shoulder. Push against. As soon as, like, as soon as you did that, you probably felt that start to get a little weak, right? Or you, it felt like, oop, I can feel it start to drop a little bit. Let's go the other way. Same thing, right? Now remember what I said, your head's a little translated. So it's, you're setting a little cockeyed, right? So we got some issue with rotation, but more than anything else, we've got this going on here. We've got some limited range of motion, maybe even a little bit of pain as you do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I like this particular test because rotation, about 85% of the rate of the rotation, 85 to 90% of the rotation takes place at about level C2 and C1. Okay. So we know already there's a, I mean, pretty much we can say well, I got an issue about C1, C2 of when he turns his head, his arm starts to get weak because there's probably some stress in that area, at least about 90% chance that there's stress in that particular area. Yeah. So, C1 starts right here, C2, right about there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have you turn your head and look over that shoulder for me. And I'm going to push on this side here. Actually, let's do this first. I'm going to demonstrate. Push against my hand. It gets weak. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm just going to push on this side.